We hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. I'm going to read something very old. 2,500 years old. Malachi 3 and 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord Jesus, whom you seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord. Thank you. You may be seated this morning. My title is Suddenly. The switch on the wall is flipped into the upward position and suddenly the light fixture in the center of the room is brilliant and it's aglow with artificial light. The button on the remote is pushed, activating an electronic device uh, across the room and a symphony fills the room in every corner almost magically or a screen brightens on the other side of the house. The cursor on your computer screen floats atop an icon on the screen and suddenly the images change from text to an image of a beautiful automobile. The electronic switching of the binary code, which many of us do not understand, suddenly brings about a modern technological miracle. The ring of the phone ceases with the tapping of your finger on a small screen and suddenly you are speaking with your loved ones world away. And your grandchildren are right there. And you're not even at home. You're just sitting in the vehicle. And they're driving down the road. And mom's holding the phone. And they're singing happy birthday to you, dear papa. Amazing what happens. All of this happens suddenly. The path of the phone signal is no longer exclusively transmitted over these wires that sag across our world or even uh, through uh, the digital communication uh, or bouncing uh, around uh, on fiber optics, uh, but the signals are flying at warp speed through space and bouncing off satellites and cell towers, uh, and, and, and they're not absorbed by the atmosphere, and somehow my phone call gets to you. How that all works, I'm not sure about the switching station, but I was punching numbers 15 seconds before your phone rang. But as soon, suddenly, when you answered, you tapped that button, you could hear my voice. In all of the above-mentioned cases, the power was available at any moment. Though the type of power and the source of power may vary, there was never a shortage. But where does the power come from? Where does it originate. Oh yes, there's condensation and convection. Uh, The warming of the earth causes condensate to rise and the coolness aloft uh, causes the clouds to form. uh, And as it changes and shifts and the wind blows and the temperatures change, uh, rain falls and and those drops become little little streams and the stream becomes a tributary uh, and a tributary becomes a river. uh, And now multiple rivers join together and form the Columbia Basin and there's seven dams stacked up. uh, along the Columbia River, almost into Canada, and we get our source of power from there. The water throws, flows through the turbines, uh, and the turbines spin uh, and create uh, uh, power uh, and transducers and transformers and electrical panels uh, all have this part to play. And you can hear the buzz as you walk through Brother Mark's farm, uh, and those high-tension wires are just going zzzz. And it's all there all the time. And all you and I have to do is just punch a button, flip a switch. Or if it's like my office is programmed or most of this building, uh, you walk into the room and the light comes on and you didn't even touch a switch. Just suddenly it's there. But that suddenly didn't just happen as suddenly as we thought it happened. There was a whole lot happening for months, even the condensation and the rain. And it took days for that little droplet of water to join with another droplet of water and get large enough in order to create the form of the river that could bring you and I power. I read to you again from Malachi 3 and 1, a different translation. It says, look. I'm sending my messenger on ahead to clear the way for me. Suddenly, 
out of the blue, the leader you've been looking for will enter his temple. Yes, the messenger of the covenant, the one you've been waiting for. Look, he's on his way. A message from the mouth of the God of the angel armies. True to the words of the Old Testament prophet, the Messiah did come suddenly without warning just on another ordinary night. Shockingly joyful news came to the needy shepherds who were watching their flocks by night. Jewish people had been waiting since the inception of the nation. The promise had been given from generation to generation. Prophets had written on sacred scrolls that he would come. The trumpet sound of the voice of little known prophets uh, had echoed across uh, the dusty hillsides of Judea and it had been 400 years uh, since Malachi said suddenly He will come to his temple. The lack of the voice of the prophet nearly brought an end to the hope in Israel that the Lord would come at all. But listen to the words that we read just a couple months ago during the Christmas season out of Luke 2 and 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid and the angel of the Lord said unto them fear not for I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior which is Christ the Lord and this shall be a sign to you you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in the manger and suddenly There was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill unto men. Just because I can't hear it doesn't mean he's not working. Just because I can't see him doesn't mean he's not working. Just because I don't feel it doesn't mean God's not working. He's stacking up miracles for you and I. He's stacked up healings for you who are in this audience auditorium and in our simulcast auditorium today God is working he's always working he doesn't sleep he doesn't slumber he hasn't plugged his ears when our voice comes into his ears he hears and he's made many promises to you and I that are in this house today I hope today your memory will be spurred at the promises directly from the word of God to you the promises that have been given by prophetic utterance into your life that you have received and yet you have not seen him don't count God out suddenly he will come I'm preaching about suddenly today oh how glad the hearts of the shepherds were after waiting for a lifetime and knowing the promise was of old and these shepherds quickly made their way to the place where the Messiah was the second coming of our Savior is going to be just as quick but that doesn't mean God hasn't been planning it for a very long time maybe God's just waiting for you to say yes to him maybe God's just waiting to say yet for you to say yes I submit yes I surrender yes I give up to you the coming of the Lord the second coming is what we wait for and I believe in the imminent return of the Lord God can come whenever he wants to come no man knows the day or the hour but the father which is in heaven but Jesus said in Mark 13 and 34 for the son of man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants, that's you and me, and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto you all, watch. Jesus is coming again. I want to be ready when he comes for me. And I'm not trying to speak fear today. But my last day could be today. It could be tomorrow. I do not know. But I know I'm ready for Jesus to come for me. It's a miracle. He did come suddenly. How many things have we waited for and waited for? And then, you know, you apply for the loan for your home and and it takes weeks and you get pre-approval and then you just still don't know. And then you make your offer and and you don't know if the realtor's being honest with you or you're not. You know, there's 14 other people that offered more money. Can you offer more money? And can you do this? And we wait and we go through the process and it's long and it seems interminable. And we wait and then suddenly the phone rings. You got it. 
But that doesn't mean that just all of a sudden out of the blue it happened and there was nothing going on behind the scenes. You and I, we don't just suddenly show up at work. Well, we do, but hopefully you dressed and you took a shower and put some smell good on and brushed your teeth and maybe had a cup of coffee so you're awake so you know whether or not you're turning around or you're going forward. Suddenly, you sit at the console of your laptop and a few keystrokes away from what previous generations would have called a technological miracle. You strike the enter key and suddenly it fills with the image of your loved ones. And you're not only speaking to them, but you're seeing them as you speak. This is how suddenly Jesus will come. This is how suddenly he will appear in your life today. It's like, hello, hello, just a hello. I gotta get this. Hello, Dick Tracy, Dick Tracy. People worked on that for decades. Back in the 70s, I remember seeing all that. We didn't watch it, we read it in comic books, you know? You're Dick Tracy, what's a comic book, you know? There we are. Wow, that's cool. I wish I had a shoe that I could talk to or through. I wish I had a watch and I wish I had this camera I could look at. And people work for decades on that. And suddenly it's on the market. And it's not just the government, but it's you and I. And we can have little tiny cameras that we put all over the place. Be careful whose house you go to. And we have listening devices and we can record everything. And, and, and people are recording me right now and I don't know where she's going to put it or where he's going to put it. But I know it's going to happen and it goes all over the world. And what seemed to be impossible just a short time ago is just everyday ordinary cameras small enough to fit in the frame of eyeglasses uh, that would transmit images to remote locations and I know they advertised them and they really were good but we don't have them you can put your glasses on and you can tell what stores are next door and what sales are going on and more information than your little pea brain can figure out all of these technological wonders have come to be in my lifetime. Things that I only imagined are suddenly available, not only to sophisticated government entities or operations, but to the general public. I'm preaching about suddenly. On March the 11th, 2011, the waves of the tsunami reached the Hawaiian Islands and caused great damage to many of the structures. And the unsuspecting tourist, it would have seemed like that the surged wave, wave had come out of nowhere. But the educated meteorologists would understand the cause of the wave occurred thousands of miles away, hours earlier, just 80 miles off the northeast coast of Japan. And what happened off of Japan impacted Hawaii. And we know, we have heard tsunami warnings. And my wife and I were there for five and a half days. And we see these towers and they look like they got these spirals around them. And, the, and on the top is this uh, uh, panel, uh, uh, a solar panel. There's tsunami warning sirens. Why? Because somebody clear across the world will say a volcano erupted on the floor of the sea. Tsunami warning. Get out of the water. It was just a few months ago they warned about it on the west coast and it didn't end up being anything big but it did swell and it did turn some boats over in some of the ports down in California. A man walks cheerfully down a summer's lane with a sense of joy and security and suddenly his ball cap is blown off by the wind and it flies down the street and his feet are pounding after it and he's saying, that just all of a sudden happened. No, it didn't. It probably started in the Himalayan mountains somewhere right. and that breath started blowing and it went clear across the Pacific Ocean or maybe even around the Atlantic and finally made it to the street he was walking down. The wind was always there. It was always blowing. It just finally reached him. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody today. The wind of the Spirit has been blowing. The Word of God has been spoken. It has been declared. And today, today, now is your suddenly. Now is your time when you can say, yes, I'll take that Holy Spirit. Yes, I'll receive my healing. Yes, I'll believe for your provision. Suddenly. The wind didn't appear out of nowhere. All previous generations would have called it heresy. Their ears would have tingled and tongues would have wagged at the telling of his coming. Truly, that is what happened that spring day in the city of Jerusalem. Generations had been waited. And now this group of about 120 men and women had prayed and waited for 7 to 10 days in what we call the upper room for the promise of the Father. And Acts 2 and 1 reads, and when the 
feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one pool place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the holy building, the whole building. And then like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. The King James says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. But you can't convince me that God didn't know when and he didn't know where. He'd been planning it. Yeah, Joel said, and it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and my sons and daughters shall prophesy. My old, the old men shall dream dreams and the young men shall see visions. And on my servants and my handmaids will I pour out my spirit in that day. And it was after that outpouring that Peter said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. I'm here to remind us uh, that God has said yes to some things uh, in your life. Don't forget, maybe it was reading the scripture and you picked it up and it said, that's mine, that's mine. God said that to me uh, and you've forgotten about it. Uh, but your memory's coming back now as the spirit of God blows uh, upon this place uh, and you can feel him uh, and you know he's working and you're saying, what about now, God? And he says, why not now? Or maybe a prophetic utterance was given to to you by a prophet or maybe your brother or sister in the Lord laid hands on you and began to speak to you and they didn't know what they were speaking or why they were speaking it but the Holy Ghost by the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge and prophetic utterance spoke into your life and you said yes you've been saying yes for weeks or months or maybe years but suddenly God shows up and says Ooh, it's time God doesn't do anything by accident or without pre-planning he was slain from the foundation of the world before he ever said, let there be light. And you can't convince me that when he said, let there be light, somebody turned the dimmer switch slowly up. It was, and there was light. It happened. Because when God says yes, it's time. Think of the apostle Paul. His name was Saul. He was a rascal. And the Bible says this in the ninth chapter of Acts and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus and the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Stop. He's a rascal. He's been, he's been going around getting papers signed by the government. He's been getting papers signed uh, by the religious leaders. Uh, he's ready to persecute. Uh, he's going to tear them up. He's going to destroy the church. Uh, all these people of the way. He hates them. He wants them imprisoned. Uh, and as he journeyed, he came near to Damascus. But God knew where he was. Uh, he knew if it was le right foot or left foot. Uh, he knew if he was heading south or north. Uh, he knew the day that he arrived. Uh, and God's got every Everything in control. And the Bible says, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said to him, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. He said, you're kicking against the briar bushes. It hurts, doesn't it? The briar bush isn't going to move. I'm not moving, Saul. Here I am. God was planning. He was lying in wait. And I, if you can think of it that way for you, God's been sitting for you. Yes. He's been in his deer blind when his Holy Ghost gun. Amen. He's been waiting. He's, he's ready to throw a heavenly grenade right in the middle of your lap. He wants that spirit break out. Break our walls down. You and I need the Holy Ghost to break some walls down in our lives. Uh, some walls of inhibition, uh, of fear, of doubt, of anxiety, uh, of guilt, uh, of shame. Yes. I come against the spirit of shame uh, in Jesus' name. Yes. Pastor Anthony preached it years ago. Shame on the devil. Yes. He's the one that started this all. Don't let shame rule your life. Just come clean. Tell us who you are. I have a friend and her husband, a pastor in British Columbia, and she wrote a book about restored, renewed, remodeled or something. And she started out as a pole dancer. She got into pornography and ended up as a pole dancer, and her life was horrible. And uh, she, married, uh, she met a backslidden preacher's kid. 
And the backslidden preacher's kid took her to church, and she cried all service long, and he said, oh, no, we're in trouble. Well, eventually what happened is she got the Holy Ghost. He prayed back through. They got married, and they passed her a church today. And she's worked with help getting women out of prostitution into good jobs. And they owned a secondhand store. And just two months ago, they bought their, a home for women that they're remodeling that's specifically for that purpose. But this is the philosophy she has. She wrote a book because she said, now it's all out and there's nothing to be ashamed about. Everybody knows, Satan knows, but they know that God delivered me. It's time to just lay it all out on the altar and say, God, this is what I was. This is what I did. That's called repentance. I'm a liar. I'm a thief. I'm a murderer. I'm a robber. I'm a, uh, you name it. I've seen God. My barber was a murderer. Baptized him in Jesus' name. He got the Holy Ghost. He's moved on. But thank God for that. God, that's what Jesus came for. That thief on the cross was probably more than just a guy that robbed grandma's purse. He was a violent offender. Paul and Silas, they were in prison for preaching, not because they broke the speed limit. They were in prison because they had done what God asked them to do. And at midnight, the Bible says they were praying. And, and, and the man that was supposed to be charge over him, them, this is the deal. If your prisoners got away, they'd kill you. That's like, do your job or else, you know? It's not like if you walk out, sorry, oh, I got sick, I'll be back tomorrow. <coughs> no, it was you lose your job, you're dead. And the Bible says they started singing and praises at midnight. And verse 26 of chapter number 16 says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loose. And God said, wow, how'd that happen? No, no, no. He's watching it all. He sees it building. He's waiting for them to praise. He's waiting for them to loose glory to his name. And he's got the angels there saying, when I say yes, you push this way and you push this way. And, and the earth will quake suddenly. God is still working even when you don't see him. Because it's a spiritual thing. And as you stand with me, I want you to think this morning of what God wants to do in your life. This morning, first service, many were healed. I'm thanking God for that. Some of you need to quit playing God and telling God he can't give you the Holy Ghost. Come on. I just, that's just not in my notes, but that's the Holy Ghost. When you say, God, you can't give it to me, you're making yourself a God. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Pinch yourself. Pin, go ahead. That's flesh. Do you feel it? You got flesh. All flesh. If you got flesh, he came to pour, his, pour out his spirit upon all flesh. We waited through the dark night, and then suddenly the sun comes out. You've struggled in the storm, and then suddenly the storm is gone. Jesus says, peace be still. You've hoped and kept faith through sickness and ravages of disease, and suddenly God heals you. It's not easy times, is it? Think of our poor Ukrainian brothers and sisters. And Russian brothers and sisters. I may post it and repost it. Our missionary that's going to be here in the month of July or missionaries to that area of the world. They're on deputation right now. Her brothers are both staying in Kiev. They're both pastors in Kiev. And they said that we have Russians and Ukrainians in the church. It's a political thing. It's not about politics. It's about people being saved. We just need to leave politics out of it. We need to be saved in Jesus' name. We need the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. So pray for a Holy Ghost ghost outpouring in Ukraine and in Russia. Sometimes when we have it easy, we get lazy. Anybody get fat in COVID? (laughs) 
Wow. May as well laugh about it. Right? They sold lots of stretchy pants to old men. Because we, you weren't going out to work, you, you know? You weren't going to the gym, weren't exercising as much, and we had it good, and you just get fat and lazy. And people are a little lazier. The restaurants are lazier. The, you go into the store, and things are just piled, and they look like Goodwill in Macy's. Yeah. Yeah, go look at it. So they got a lazy. Can't even get to the shoe aisle. Stuff's parked in there. Because we've gotten lazy, because... We could, but now we got to get to work again and got to figure it out. Sometimes the best time for God to work is in pressure-filled times. So we talked about Jeremiah a couple weeks ago. Jeremiah got to preach to everybody and they said, we don't like you. We don't want to hear what you have to say. We're going to throw you in the septic tank. We're going to throw you in prison. We're going to exile you. And he, he was the preacher that nobody wants to be. And then there's Isaiah. And Isaiah was on the payroll of the king for 52 years. He had it good. But then the king died. And he went, <laughs> And he's crying out to God, right? Telling God about his problems. And God says, well, I got a problem. I got a message for the nation, and I need somebody to go tell them that they need to repent. And that's when Isaiah says, well, here am I, O Lord. Send me. Up to chapter 6, Isaiah has said nothing about the Messiah. But from that on out, in almost every chapter, he talks about the coming of the Messiah. Why? Because they needed one. Do you need a savior? Do you need a healer? Do you need a provider? Do you need a deliverer today? God is ready. It wasn't an accident that the Holy Ghost got poured out on the day of Pentecost. Jesus could have chosen to go to heaven the day before, but no, he said, I'm going to go 10 days early. Now go wait. And they waited and they prayed. And all of a sudden he says, yes. Suddenly, bam. Suddenly. It was suddenly to them, but it wasn't to him. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place in one accord. Listen to what Paul says to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. For all the promises of God in him, Jesus, are yea, and in him, Jesus, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which established you, us with you, in Christ hath anointed us in God, who hath sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Now I want to give you that in plain English and then give you a challenge. He says, whatever God has promised gets stamped with the yes of Jesus. Don't you like it when Jesus says yes? Yes, I'll heal you. Yes, I'll deliver you. Less. Somebody needs deliverance. You're addicted today. There's a deliverer in the house. And he said, yes, today is the day. Yes, today. And I'm not just talking about drugs and alcohol. I'm talking about lifestyle issues. I'm talking about mindsets. I'm talking about where you go for your entertainment. In him, this is what we preach and pray. The great amen. Here's the great amen. God's yes with our yes together. Gloriously evident. So we want... Not God to say yes to our yes, but God wants us to say yes to his yes. A little bit different story, isn't it? No wonder sometimes we come and we ask a miss that we may consume it upon our own lust. And we say, just say yes, God. And he's saying, no, that's your job. Your job is to find out what my yes is and then say yes to my yes, which is amen, which is so be it. 
Verse 21 says, God affirms us, making us a sure thing. Everybody say sure thing. Sure thing, sure thing in Christ, putting his yes within us. By his spirit, he has stamped us with his eternal pledge, a sure beginning of what he is destined to complete. So 2,000 years ago, Paul is saying, God put his yes within the church by his spirit. And he began something, but he's going to keep working and keep working and keep working until he's completed that work. So what I want us today is connect with the yes of God. So think about it. And I know we're slow mowing it right now. But it's going to pop up in just a minute. It's what has God said yes. Has he said yes, you're going to walk away one day and you're going to never have any desire for that drug, for that alcohol, for that pornography, for that anger, for that fear, for that depression. And yes, fear and depression and anger are addictive. I used to be addicted to anger. Can you tell? <laughs> but one day I said yes to God's yes and let it go. And he's freed me from that bondage. Amen. So what has God said yes to you about? Some of you are thinking about things that God said years ago. Yes, years ago. And the preacher has preached again and again and again. And finally you said, he must be a false prophet or maybe God didn't say it. But what's the Holy Ghost saying right now in your heart today? Do you feel that yes rising up? So I'm going to open this altar if you need a healing. Those are the first people I want. Anybody need to be healed, physically healed. You got to come plant your feet right up against the altar because we're going to crowd in here. I want Brother Joe and Brother Michael and Brother Martin. Brother, you see there's oil right in that. We're going to lay hands on you. Because James says, anoint with them with oil, laying hands on the sick, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if he's committed any sin, they shall be forgiven him. That's it. Just fill in these pockets right over here. And you ministers, you, one of them's cracked, but the other four... And Brother Husey needs one die because we need to anoint these people and pray for them. Do you believe that God's a healer of all of our diseases? Okay. Here's the thing. I want to get us out of our selfish mode. Is there anybody that's never received the Holy Ghost and you really want the Holy Ghost? And you want to come up and pray? That's it, David. Come on up. This young man needs the Holy I need a partner with him to pray with him. Maybe one of you ministers. Brother Joe, you go pray with him. You give this bottle of oil. Who else can take a bottle of oil and pray for people? Brother David, don't miss it. You come up here and you start laying hands on people when I tell you to and anoint people with oil. David's going to get the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody that just needs to be delivered from something? Come on. This is your time to say yes to God. We're not going to ask you to name it. Don't get scared. <laughs> yeah, scared. God's going to do something. In a moment, we're going to say yes to God's yes. And if you need deliverance from something, I want you to pray for somebody that needs healing. Okay? And say, yes, Jesus, we need this. Isn't God good? Did you feel the Holy Ghost rising? So he put his yes within us. So we can say yes to his yes. And that's the great amen, which is so be it. Are you ready? Let's begin to pray. Let's anoint those with oil that need healing in their bodies. If you need deliverance, that's right. You lay hands on somebody that needs healing and you pray for their healing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.